What's up, King Creator fans? For the first invention of the day, we will need a lot of matches, which we will delicately arrange on a piece of paper. You can use a pair of tweezers to help you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Set aside the matches you just separated, remove the box, and send the leftover matches flying. Somebody stop those candles before they escape. I got them. We will lay out a sheet of paper, and with our box cutter, we'll grate the side of one of the candles to make a pile of fine wax shreddings. Now grab the Tic Tacs you saved from after lunch and empty a few on our sheet. We'll call Mr. Hammer and ask him to pulverize the poor peppermint treats. Then with whatever object you have on hand, gather the ingredients in a little pile. Bring back the matches from a few moments ago and, with the help of tweezers, cut them practically in half. Place the pieces alongside the other ingredients. With the help of a popsicle stick or any elongated object, you can group everything together in the center by moving the paper like you see here on the screen. I hope you don't want to throw away those matches because we will need two of the box lids next. Cut out one of the wide parts with a pair of scissors and repeat the same step with the other box. Now, with the help of your favorite instant glue, we will join them together like this. We're also going to be using the container portion from both boxes. Those we're going to cut off one of the shorter sides. Do this same thing to both boxes. Then we'll attach these together so they form one piece. We will take both pieces and insert the one that only has a hole on the other part, creating what in the supermarket they would advertise as a jumbo box of matches. We will fill the new box with our combination of ingredients that we made in the beginning. By the way, I did mention we would need to prepare even more of this stuff, right? Borrow the massive pile of keys that your dad carries and remove one of those metal key rings. Your dad won't need it. We will cut out one of the scratchy sides from the matchbox. And we will fold it in half like this. Be sure to hit subscribe and like this video. With instant glue, we'll join the scraper to the metal ring. Now, you have to find where they sell dinosaur size matches. Seriously, they have to be at least as long as a half a ruler. We're going to need four of these matches. Use the jumbo box of matches that we created and measure the big matches against its height. The long matches will have to stick out a little from the box, so you should mark a little higher than the box and then cut the excess with some pliers. Put them together like you see here, and with the help of two elastic bands, you will secure them at the top and the bottom, preventing them from separating. My mother threatened to tie my brothers and me up like that when we fought. It would have been really interesting to see what would have happened if she had. Tell us in the comments what interesting or funny punishments your mom threatened you with as a kid. Alright, enough talking. Let's continue by inserting the wick in the center of our stack of matches. We will take our scraper ring and insert our match and wick bundle into the space between the scraper. Close the end with a rubber band to keep all of our activator in place. Cut out a rectangle like the one you see on the screen from the box leftovers. Use the box to measure where you will fold the tabs and then close it into the box, creating the container for our future smoke artifact. Use a pointed object to create a central hole in the lid of the box. I'm going to use my drill to make my life easier. If necessary, make it bigger so that the activator can fit through the hole. We're done! Simply pull the ring and the magic will happen. Always be sure to throw it far away from you. As the flame goes down through the wick, you can see how our smoke box begins to activate. This invention would be the perfect distraction in an epic battle against your backyard squirrel or an invaluable resource for sending out smoke signals in case you get lost on your morning walk in the park. We will start the next invention with a popsicle stick. Two popsicle sticks, 
three popsicle sticks, four popsicle sticks. With a snap, we'll order them to settle down. Then we'll glue them together with a little instant glue. Don't forget to put the lid back on so it doesn't dry out. With our table of popsicle sticks ready, we will proceed to take a well-deserved rest with an icy cold soda. As usual, I will have a Coke served in a glass. Take the toilet paper roll out of the nearest bathroom. Tear off a couple of pieces and roll it up with a rubber band on a toothpick. This will be the sugar residue cleaning tool. With the can well cleaned, the next step will be to look for a couple of objects that serve as a base or support. Take the can and with a black marker make an outline with the help of the foundation that we just assembled. Put the can aside and get rid of the support. Now, with the cutter, we will slice along the outline that we made. Be careful with your fingers. We'll throw the top half of the can overboard and keep just the bottom half for now. After scoring and cutting a slot like the one you see on your screen, we'll fetch the popsicle stick board. We will put the aluminum can on the table and make an outline just to have a guide as to where to place the hot glue on the wooden base. With the compartment of our future mini oven ready, it is time to bring out another Coke from the refrigerator. We'll cut it like so and get rid of the excess. Back to our oven, it's time to layer some super glue on top and join it with the new can. It's time to bring out the most powerful, sticky stuff on the planet, duct tape. It is a formidable opponent when it comes to opening packages. Cut a thin piece and put it where both cans meet to reinforce them. I assure you that with this combination of glue and duct tape, they will never come apart. Mark the area to be cut out with a permanent marker. This slot will be where we insert the delicious pizzas. Hold the whole invention steady with one hand and aim a strong blow at the area you've cut. The little door works perfectly. Our friend the drill will make a hole in the door where we will insert a thumbtack that will function as a doorknob. Our mini oven is ready, but we cannot start preparing delicious pizzas like an Italian chef without first having something that helps us put them in the oven. What kind of Italian pizza maker would we be if we did not have this useful tool? To make this piece, mark two points on the popsicle sticks four centimeters apart. Then we will cut alongside the marks with a strong snip from the scissors. Discard the leftover sticks or save them for future inventions. We magically glue the pieces together and put a little super glue on the thinner stick to place the small board on top, forming our pizza shovel. We'll only need one candle. To prep the mini oven, light the candle and put it in the lower compartment. For the purpose of this invention, I got gourmet mini pizzas that you can definitely eat in one bite. Look how adorable! They're like little toys! Delicately take one out with the tweezers so as not to damage it. Bring the mini oven closer. Put the mini pizza on the mini shovel. Open the mini door and put it inside. In a matter of a few minutes, the pizza will be fully cooked and ready to eat. It looks delicious! The grated cheese, the crunchy dough, and the steam from just coming out of the oven. Bon appetit! For the next invention, we opted to buy a pack of sticks instead of eating ice cream every time we came up with a new invention. I was already worrying about the enormous amount of sugar I was ingesting. With tiny pocket knife scissors, we'll cut the template of our professional launcher. We have to divide the design into its different parts since we'll be making all of the pieces separately. 
we will start with the cylinder head in the cabin. First, we will trace the design onto the wood and cut it out. We will need to do this three times to give it dimension. With a little instant glue, we'll join all of them together. We will use a technique that is the bread and butter of carpenters around the world. It consists of holding a piece of wood well with clamps, or in our case, clothespins. Then we will be sanding them down, making it as clean a line as possible. Once the wood has formed the shape we want and the edges are as smooth as a baby's bottom, we will glue on this small piece that you can see on the screen with a lot of glue. We'll glue on two more sticks. And we will cut out this large piece that is next to the trigger. Then we'll trace its outline on the wood. Use the same popsicle stick for the cartridge as well. We will repeat the same procedure of cutting and sanding the wood to obtain both pieces. Put some glue on the cartridge and glue it to the stock. We will also attach the support for the trigger with glue. Our creation is taking shape, don't you think? Now we'll need an empty soda can. Mine, of course, will be a Coke. Several fans commented on previous videos asking me if I promote this drink because it appears in almost all of them. But the truth is, I just love it. After this little commercial, we will glue the aluminum piece that we extracted from the can and cut another small piece to shape the trigger. We're almost done. Now, you only need the long part of the cabin where the small projectile will be stored to be launched. After cutting off the needle of a syringe, we'll remove the pointed part, and then we'll glue it to the rest of the wooden part. It looks great, but we can't forget a very important step without which nothing we did would work. The fuel! It takes a couple of matches and with the help of pliers, we will chop off the magic powder that lights them. We need it to be as fine as possible, so with the help of a flat-headed object, grind the powder even more. Now put it inside the metal part of our launcher like you see on the screen. For the projectile, I will use a piece of aluminum, but you can use any object that fits inside the nozzle and has the shape you need. Finally, place it onto the launcher. We only need an ordinary lighter to heat the metal up to high temperatures. Launch the projectile as hard as you can. Thanks for watching our inventions made out of household items today. Follow my channel if you'd like to learn more about making simple yet incredible inventions. Also, click on the link to see more videos about my amazing inventions. Click on the link to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial.